Hi class. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, creating a poster in Adobe Illustrator, but we're also going to be reaching back into Adobe Photoshop to uh, get our source material. <clears throat> and today's project basically deals with a poster that is uh, a real life situation. I've given you a true um, festival, a film festival to illustrate, or I should say design, a poster for. And um, it actually is taking place currently. It's a year-long festival, so it is pertinent. And I, I'm trying to uh, instill in my classes the need to create real projects for yourself. Uh, because as you create real projects, you actually uh, build a viable portfolio uh, that can be used in the workplace. It's not like you're doing color studies and um, your potential employer or your potential client is looking at a bunch of stuff that is basically busy classwork. Uh, I'm, I'm not a proponent of that and as an art director and a uh, person that's in the field I want to see real projects. So you have to get into the frame of mind that everything you create has the potential to be placed in your portfolio as a, a designer. So with that in mind, I've created this project, which is a real uh, life situation. It has real life specifications, and it's a item that you can pretty much shop around to a uh, potential client and say, well, this is the one I've, I've worked on uh, in response to uh, this festival. It does not mean that you actually had the job, but it means that you did a response piece um, in hope of uh, honing your own skills. So, my source material, as you see, is my dog. Um, I did this, um, well, I didn't do this. My daughter dressed the dog up in an airplane costume and um, took her on Halloween. I guess they walked around the neighborhood with it. Um, but I thought it was a funny thing, and I wanted to use that in, as part of my poster, mainly because that whole idea of a uh, film being flights of fantasy or and um, just fantastical items uh, that that you get with film and the ability to to go different places, travel. So I drew my sketch, which let me uh, pop over here. My sketch is. Um, very simple. It says film festival and it's got the dog flying through the air and uh, it's a very simple sketch but you get the idea. Um, I want it uh, obviously in a vertical format that means it's uh, thinner side to side than it is tall. So it is a vertical format. We know that um, according to our spec sheet that it is a 20 inch by 30 inch poster. So the way I start this is I actually open up Illustrator to a blank document, which would basically be that. It's a it's a blank field. You see nothing. You see the um, I went in and under new uh, Illustrator new, <clears throat> I end up with a dialog box where I can plug in my widths. And you'll notice uh, Illustrator likes to go with points, the points being a uh, print way of working. Uh, I don't know what the points are, so what I do is I type in 20 space IN for inches. And Illustrator will automatically say, hey, dummy, <laughs> that's 1,440 points. 20 inches is 1,440 points. And likewise, uh, the height. I don't know what it is in points, so I'm going to type in 30 space IN for inches. Hit enter. And there, I have a new, new product right there, ready to go, ready to begin designing with. So that's what I've done. And I've opened up an image of my dog in Illustrator. I basically go to File Open and Illustrator does some great things uh, within fo with Photoshop which is it will open up a Photoshop document whether it's a JPEG, a PSD, a GIF, a, a PNG file. Um, so it opened it up 
and you'll notice uh, I did create some um, I made it easy on myself because I created a version of this uh, dog photograph with the, the background rug clipped out so it's just my dog uh, looking up and I like the idea of that airplane but this airplane is kind of droopy it's got droopy wings I'm gonna have to make some adjustments when I go into Illustrator so what I start doing is I start with items that I know are going to be behind the dog body is going to be underneath of the airplane so I begin to just draw the dog body and I if we click on it um, I want to zoom in way close and I'll show you what I'm doing here um, just give me a second plus 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 I hit command and the plus sign and it zooms way in um, I have to go down here and scroll over we'll go down to the toes that's a pretty interesting area and you'll notice as we zoom in, I can actually use the uh, magnifying glass tool, and that'll also get me way in close. And you'll notice how jagged it is and how uh, sharp these, these edges are. And that's because I've used something called the pen tool. The pen tool is here on the left, and as you scroll in, it would probably be, well, here I've got it in the fifth layer down, you'll notice the pen tool has add anchor point tool, the delete anchor point tool, and convert anchor point tool all within the same dropout. You can make this a standalone little box that you can pull off and carry around your projects. And um, here we go. I'm going to get into the uh, dog body layer. I know it's this one because I've already named it uh, Body Black. And here I'm going to actually use the, this pen tool up here above and to the left and draw some lines. I have to change my color here because it's uh, you're, you're not seeing it. You need it all black, okay. I seem to have a transparency set to this, so I'm going to change that to um, a fill. There we go, black. Black with a white line. Now, the black is the fill color. The white edge is the box, this little box here. I can make that have no fill by hitting the red line, which means none. And so it's now just the black line. So from here, we fill in. Now I have basically a trapezoid here, but I can take what is called a um, adjustment here, and we'll, we'll adjust what is the points. So in my um, printed lecture, you'll notice we talk about the curves and the ability to uh, change the angle on the arcs coming out of a point. And with the convert anchor point tool, you can adjust with these little handles the left and the right. line as it comes out from the point. Now I can go like this, I can make it into a zigzag. You can see we can have a lot of power and likewise the second click that I click on that anchor tool means that I can I start out by having both capabilities. I unclick and then I click again on the handle and now I've got just one side that's being adjusted and if I don't like that I can click on it again and it disappears, what I just did. I click on it, pull the arc, click on it again, and it makes another arc. And now I can still fine tune how this one's behaving coming out of there and make adjustments. Oh, I don't like that. Well, that's okay. So what I've done is basically I've turned the dog there's my dog picture. I've basically gone around my dog on a new layer and just basically clicked points. And 
and I'm doing this very quickly just for this demo, but you see I'm basically creating shapes that are overlaying my picture tracing. And as we zoom out, there she is in all her glory. You can see I'm, I'm um, creating these, these large shapes that I know are basically the outline of the dog's body all the way up to the tail. Now, what's going on here? Why am I just leaving this kind of, you know, flat? Well, that's because the head shape, I want the head different. And it's actually going to overlay a lot of that. The dog's hat overlays it. And let's not forget the airplane body. That also overlays it. So the dog's body that's behind there does not really matter. And since we're working on layers, as you can see, each of these is its own separate layer, I can shut them off and hide things that are below as needed. So I've created this dog body. And here we go. I've got one called Feet Tan. And that's that the tan color of my dog is different than the black, right? So I've created a layer that's just this tan shape. And I've overlaid that over top of the black on a different layer. So I could shut it off, turn it on. I could make uh, adjustments. I could make gradients out of it. Um, does not matter. I, I've got all the power once I create the shape. There's the dog head. Now I've got a little red outline, um, the stroke applied to the red outline on the dog's head. There's her head. And if I click on that shape with my selection tool, you'll notice whoops, I'm in the body. There we go. Head black. You'll notice down here on the right that this stroke color is red. Now, I'm, I'm using that red because I use that red in the airplane. So you'll see it reappear every, every once in a while. Now, the dog's face is not black. The dog's face has that same tan, so I created a shape that was just her face color. Now, also, my dog has eyes and a nose. Uh, so I created a layer called Eyes Nose and there's the eyes and the nose. Now I did a really cool little thing here in the eyeball if we zoom way in and what I did is uh, if you remember our simple circle there that we created a uh, reflection um, in um, I believe we did it in a Photoshop project last however here I've just used the um, underneath the rectangle tool is the ellipse tool and I've just created a little circle and filled it with white uh, for that, I've also created another circle from the ellipse tool. Got to make sure I can work on it. So I created a circle. And here, we're, remember our default before was uh, red because that was the last thing I had selected. So I'm going to get rid of my stroke. So now I've got a black circle. I'm going to hit gradient. And up comes my, my gradient tool. And I've got currently selected blue. I got a green and a white. And I'm going to set my sliders to an opacity, I don't know, of 70. Oops, I've got to make sure I'm not working on the, uh, the stroke. I've got to be working on the fill, folks. So my opacity of 70 in the blue. The yellow, I'm going to set to an opacity of 50. And the white, an opacity of 100. So I can show it to you over here on the right. So let's drag this over top of a black field so you get a good vibe of what's going on. Drag it out here. So you can see I've actually got some transparencies going on. Now, 
well, how, how did I get it vertical? Well, I can rotate that transparency to a um, an angle. If I, you notice, I've got various angles I can select. So if I go 90, 90 degrees, there, it's 90 degree angle. I don't like that. I want the blue on the bottom. So, okay, rather than minus 90, I'll go plus 90. And there it flipped again. You see what's going on there? Okay, it's too white up top. Okay, then how do I get rid of that? Well, I can either change it to black or I can set the opacity down all the way down to zero. So that white swatch is now clear. Do we see that? Okay. And I can then proceed to, to put that eyeball in place. And we hit delete, and it's gone. So that's how the eyeball is built. You notice it's got a background shape of black and then an overlaid eyeball um, shape with the gradient. And on top of all that is a little white dot. Zoom out. We do it twice. We just after I create this, I just copy it, paste it over here. I've got two of them. Go to the airplane body. Now I don't know if you guys saw that, but you notice how the airplane itself in the dog suit droops because I guess it was cheaply made. Uh, however, in my drawing back in Photoshop, I had the airplane. Uh, with a stiff wing. So here I've just taken the points, moved the points up, and uh, created a what looks to be a stable airplane platform. And if I shut off the picture below, you'll notice the uh, airplane shape takes plate takes a uh, form. The tail section also, if you remember the original drawing, or excuse me, the original photograph, look how floppy this tail section is. Uh, it just does not work. So, I created a tail section that looks a little more uh, in line with, with the rest of the airplane body. And it does look very cartoony, but that's, that's fine too. Uh, I have a layer here called Stars and Stripes, which basically are the airplane's uh, insignia, which uh, is also overlaying uh, the, it's a totally new layer, and it overlays the red below it. It follows the line of the little airplane uh, photograph, and um, we then can add the pilot. Now, my pilot looks a little more realistic than the other one, uh, the original photograph. I wanted him to kind of look stylized, 1930s. Um, put the dog's hat back on. Dog's hat was two different items. It was a hat shape, and then I made a, a little propeller, which sits on top. And then I laid a background fade. Now, let's shut that off and turn it back on. Background fade is actually a giant gradient that goes over the entire piece and it just softens the whole piece so that I can put type over top. Let me zoom way out and we'll look at that again. Put the type up. And now I'm going to shut that background fade off. You see that? It gets more intense. It's very subtle, but I think it needed it so that the type would pop. Uh, the background clouds, if you notice, those are also um, just little, little oval shapes that I've created via the ellipse tool and fill. And also setting it to gradient and transparency adjustments. Likewise, way down at the bottom, Let's uh, shut these all off. Step way back in time. 
So we only see the background. Uh, I basically created these little shapes here um, with the selection tool, which is the same one that I made the ellipses on. It's the rectangle tool, and then I just kind of bent the edges via the um, adjusting the points. Uh, you can use your little arrow keys uh, after you've selected a point to, to move those arrows uh, left, right, up and down, and make those points go where you want them. Likewise, there's tools like the star tool, the flare tool, the polygon tool. Uh, the flare tool is just one of those um, items that make it look like a camera flare. Um, I'm going to overlay a quick quick layer here. And uh, there, ready? let's just make it small. There. It's a lens flare effect. Uh, if you want it, you, it's there to use. Um, I don't go overboard with things like that, mainly because I think those are they're kind of cheap tricks. Um, and I think uh, as you build your skill, you kind of avoid them because they're they're definitely a newbie tool. And you don't want to be seen as a newbie, even if you are. I created something called Film Strip, and that's mainly because this is a film festival. So if you look, there's the this little film section over top that I've overlain with the uh, the little holes in the side of the film and that is just so the text has something solid to bounce off of and that people get the idea that this is a film festival even though it is some weird dog flying through. poster seems to be pretty much finished um, I'm pretty happy with it I've imported the text on various layers and uh, as you can see I have top layer here which uh, is all my text says the AFI Latin American Film Festival and that is one layer of text which I can shut off and on depending on or move it around as I need to let me see if I can pick it up here oh I see what's going on folks I've got it locked so as I unlock it I'm very very paranoid about locking and unlocking things I'd rather have things locked and safe so I can move this around as needed uh, I can change its angle you know if I wanted something really cool I can make changes like that although I don't like that but um, you know all these options are out there so control Z or command Z on the uh, Mac will get us back to where we were. All the text that was imported from the document, uh, the spec stock is here. Um, prices $5 to $12. Uh, when it runs, Friday, September 21st, 2012 through Tuesday, September 10th, 2013, daily, and a phone number in order to contact. So all the specs are met. It's 20 by 30. It's ready to go. So that is everything I need to submit this to the client. So under Illustrator File, I save it. Obviously, we save it. And um, I've saved this one pr currently as Project 2 Poster Demo AI. Uh, I could also save this as an EPS and, uh, or a PDF. I could PDF this uh, and uh, send it out or disperse it widely to folks that do not have Adobe Illustrator to view it. Um, so I'm going to uh, optimize this particular one for a save PDF for the web. And that is it. Uh, I want you to also save this for the, uh, the web and post it in conference so that we can all comment on it however your EPS or uh, Adobe Illustrator document your EPS or AI I'd like you to post those within the uh, gradebook region and uh, so that I can look at your different layers and make sure you're you're not getting stuck somewhere so um, we've got a little time to work on it but this also is a project that will build our third and final project uh, which will be a magazine spread in Adobe Illustrator. And it will utilize both 
Photoshop and Illustrator for our last project. So enjoy it. Have fun. I had fun doing it.